Yo, what's up everyone? My name is Andrew Warren, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about some more positive news regarding Tesla as a company. And as we know, whenever we get positive news for Tesla, that also relates to Tesla stock as well. And speaking of Tesla stock, it has hit an all-time high once again for today. So that is two all-time highs day after day. We had yesterday with an all-time high, and then it broke that once again with today at a gain of 2.8%. So another fantastic day for Tesla stock. This is something that especially gets me excited considering that Tesla is a majority position in my portfolio. So this is something that I, I really get excited about. And so for this news video, we're going to be discussing Tesla insurance. And that's something that I think is really important to Tesla as a company. And it goes into that concept that Tesla is a multifaceted company. It not only just focuses on cars. Tesla is way more than an automotive company. And that's what I think people need to realize as the stock price gets higher and higher and higher. There's always those typical investors that say, why should I invest in Tesla stock? It's worth more than all of the vehicle companies combined right now. And what they just fail to understand is that Tesla is not just an automotive company. That is just a small aspect. And obviously the automotive aspect of Tesla is what's making them the most money right now. But that is not the only plan that they have for their company. As we know, Tesla does a fantastic job of being efficient, optimized, and vertically integrated. And we've even heard in the past about how Elon Musk stated that there's still like a thousand percent in terms of factory efficiency for them to keep improving on their production in the future. Keep in mind he said at least one thousand and possibly up to 10,000%. So not only is Tesla an efficient company and very optimized, but they also have many aspects of vertical integration, and that is where Tesla insurance falls into place. And then also, like I said, Tesla is not just an automotive company. Obviously, they make cars. Then they're also expanding into the truck business as well, like as in heavy-duty truckers with a Tesla Semi. And then another major component of their company is battery storage. So they're working on battery solutions right now. Keep in mind, they're operating on declining cost curves for the batteries. So that means the farther we go on the higher the capacity and possibly the cheaper the cost as well and that's the advantage of them being vertically integrated with the batteries then we also know that they work on large-scale battery storage as in for like grid power functions then they have solar panels so there's a lot of vertical integration whereas Tesla produces many different types of products but they all play well together hand in hand and they're all growing markets so I really just wanted to emphasize this vertical integration that does exist within Tesla and that's why a lot of people find value in this stock even at near 19 hundred dollars per share so that plays along with the topic of insurance which is what this video is going to be mainly about and as always if you all do enjoy these tesla videos and the tesla content please make sure to smash that like button but just getting into this article for today this is another article by electric and it is discussing an expansion on insurance services by tesla outside of california so anyways let's go ahead and get into this article and then we'll expand on that a little bit more in just a second as you can see this is another article by electric and author fred lambert and this states Tesla is starting to expand its insurance business outside of California. So that's something that a lot of us have known already. I'm not like super knowledgeable on the whole insurance situation just because I don't know much about insurance, honestly. But I was aware that they had some sort of service in California and that there would be talk for later expansion on this service, which is something that I would love to see because that just provides more revenue for Tesla's pockets. Keep in mind, not only are they selling cars, but there's also a huge advantage to this insurance as well, meaning that they can provide insurance cheaper to Tesla customers. And the advantage comes from that full self drive driving computer technology where it can basically understand specifically the driver that uses that vehicle, use all of these statistics to come up with a reasonable number in terms of cost for insurance per month. So let's say if you're a safe driver and you don't own a Tesla right now. Also, by the way, if you hear anything in the background, that's just because it's raining heavily right now. But the advantage to Tesla insurance is like I said, it uses that full self-driving computer to kind of get that personalized data for that specific driver and then give a number that is the most efficient and cheapest number possible for the way that this driver drives. And that's an advantage that you don't have with other car companies where they give you a flat rate across the board. I know some of it's based off of like the color of your vehicle, but it can't be as personalized. So there's not really as many advantages to your typical automotive company insurance compared to the possibilities with Tesla. So with it being vertically integrated to Tesla, there is that possibility in the future of them being able to personalize that insurance for you specifically based on your car's data, which also rewards
towards safer drivers. So if you're a really safe driver, then you're going to get a cheaper insurance price, which is really valuable to a lot of people, especially including myself as well. I would love to save on insurance. That's one of the main reasons that I don't own a vehicle right now, because I see myself having to put in a large amount of money every single month for car insurance, and that's on top of your car payment. So that's one of the main reasons I don't have a vehicle right now. And if they could solve that problem of cheap insurance, then that would be absolutely huge in my opinion. This It's much bigger than I think people realize because as I said, insurance is almost kind of a deal breaker for me regarding why I don't own a vehicle right now. So for one thing, there's that possibility for Tesla to be able to personalize the cost of insurance for those people regarding their driving data, but it also just generally makes insurance cheaper regardless of all that personalized data and everything like that. It simply makes insurance cheaper. At least on paper, it makes sense because there is that aspect of vertical integration. When a company is vertically integrated, the other aspects of production that would normally be outsourced, most times because of it being produced in-house, it makes it cheaper for both the company and the consumer because they're able to lower prices because they don't have a, a large cost basis compared to what it typically would be. So that's the gist of Tesla insurance. That's where the advantages are. So let's get a little bit farther into this article talking about this potential expansion outside of California. So keep in mind, this article actually mentions right here what I was just discussing about the potential cheaper cost of insurance, where it says, in California, the automaker claims up to 30% cheaper premiums than the competition. So we're talking about a 30% price reduction on insurance. That's absolutely huge. It also mentions the Insure My Tesla program in partnership with third party insurers. And it then discusses a new program brokered by Tesla through state national insurance. And it mentions that with this, the automaker Tesla is able to be much more involved in that process in which it says basically makes Tesla result in being pretty much the insurer in itself, even though it's in collaboration with state national insurance. They understand what's going on. They understand their vehicles. They understand everything about them. And honestly, it just makes sense because you would want your insurance provider to know the most about your vehicles and you as a driver because that is what helps drive the cost down. And here is a quote by the Tesla chief financial officer known as Zachary Kirkhorn in which he talked about improving insurance. And he stated, we are working on what we call version two or we can call it the first version of our telematics product. And so really ultimately what we wanna get with Tesla insurance is to be able to use the data that's captured in the car in the driving profile of the person in the car to be able to assess correlations and probabilities of crash and be able to then assess a premium on a monthly basis for that customer. And what makes this very exciting for us is the amount of data that is available with the customer's permission to use is it's not available in any other product or any other vehicle in the world. So this gives a unique advantage in terms of information. So this is actually really similar to what I just explained when we were at the first part of the article. So like I said, it uses that personalized data based off of your driving profile. Now, of course, it's up to you whether you want to give that data to them and say, use this to determine my insurance premium price. So like I said, that option is there. You can decline it and pay the normal rate. Or if you're a safer driver, you can be like, okay, here's the access to my information for my driving profile. And hopefully if you are a safe driver, then you'll get a cheaper premium cost. So that is huge. That is absolutely huge. And then in reference to the topic of this service being provided outside of California, it does mention that Kirkhorn said that they could just launch their product outside of California but they instead decided to wait until they complete their new product using more telematics before expanding. So basically they just wanna get more information, more things developed before they expand it much further. And then he stated that it should be ready to expand by the end of the year. Now also keep in mind, this is the chief financial officer, Zachary Kirkhorn. So this is on his timeline. As we know, Elon Musk loves the aggressive timelines. He gives us some timelines sometimes where it may be a few months later after that timeline, sometimes even a year later or few. And I'm not faulting Elon Musk for that. I love of his aggressive timelines and I would honestly rather them have their vision on that timeline than a much further out one because obviously it motivates the whole company and the teams involved but keep in mind this is not Elon Musk time this is Zachary Kirkhorn time obviously Elon Musk is likely involved in that timeline but this is the CFO telling us this not Elon Musk so one could assume that this timeline is probably going to be pretty accurate at least hopefully unless they run into some issues so I think that's important to note as well this isn't Elon Musk saying this keep in mind I'm not saying Elon Musk word has less value in terms of timelines but we all know that he's had an aggressive time Line for many events in the past. And that's not at the fault of Elon. I, I love to hear people being positive and, and having aggressive timelines about what they're doing. But I just thought that was important to note. And regarding that statement, he stated, where we are now is nearly complete with the risk and cost analysis associated with the first version of the telematics product. We hope to be filing that in a handful of states with regulators very shortly. And assuming that regulatory approvals go smoothly, we hope to have this in a handful of states by the end of the year. 
So keep in mind, like I said, as always, this company does have aggressive timelines, but as it says, this is kind of just depending on regulatory approval. So some of this isn't really in their hands in terms of a timeline, but that is what they're looking at right now in terms of a goal. And so right here, this article also mentions about the most recent announcement regarding insurance, Tesla insurance in China. And so not only is there going to be an expansion across many states in the United States other than just California, but we also got that news piece recently regarding Tesla insurance in China. And I'm assuming in China, things are going to happen very fast. Everything that they've tried to expand on in China has happened in an expedited process. And honestly, so far in comparison to all of the other Tesla locations in the world, China seems to be the one with the most impressive timeline, like aggressive timelines that actually happen. So as we know, they're developing the wrap service. Now we have an insurance service. I've mentioned this in previous videos. So there's an expansion in the United States on Tesla insurance and then also in China. Keep in mind, the more vehicles that are purchased, the more data that we get for the full self-driving technology that can not only help train the neural net and the AI for the full self driving, but it can also be used for Tesla insurance as well, which is a huge asset, especially the more vehicles that we get that are that are Tesla models, that's just more money for Tesla because that means that's the more data we get for Tesla insurance, meaning they can provide it at a cheaper cost, meaning that more customers gravitate towards the cheaper insurance. So it's 100% a win-win for Tesla in my opinion, and I'm really excited to see what happens out of this. So keep in mind with the growth of Tesla insurance, we're not only seeing progress in the United States, which is something I'd love to see sometime in the near future, but we're also seeing it in China as well. And as the China insurance service gets developed for Tesla, then we could start seeing progress in other countries in addition to the US and China, such as maybe in Germany. We're seeing a bunch of things happen in Germany right now. Of course, some of them aren't always good news. I know we have like an issue with windshield wipers and how you actually engage the wipers. That's a situation in itself right now. But overall, I see a lot of potential in terms of business expansion, whether it's building more factories, adding wrap services, adding more Tesla insurance, services or things like that and we can even go aside from the vehicle stuff and, and talk about solar panels battery grid technology and things like that but basically I'm just trying to emphasize this news in terms of why I see it as valuable to the company and how that relates to Tesla stock so there's a lot of advantages to scaling a business what we want to see out of Tesla over the next few years is massive growth and I think they're doing exactly everything that they need to do so far with the capital that they have to use for funding so anyways I hope you all enjoyed this video if you did please make sure to smash that like button it really does help me out and also feel Feel free to sign up to Robinhood and Weeble in the description below with my referral link if you'd like to begin investing. And especially with Weeble, if you sign up with my link and deposit $100, you get an additional free stock. So that's two free stocks pretty much as passive income. But I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week.